Hello guys, gals, and on my Pals, welcome back to my channel, and today I wanted to go over how to make Gil with only a specific Final Fantasy XIV expansion, and we're first starting with A Realm Reborn. The purpose of this series is to mainly highlight different types of crafting throughout all the expansions, especially ones you might have missed. Whether you're brand new to the game, just getting through a Realm Reborn, or if you're a max level Omni Crafter, there will be viable information and crafts for both. And this video is only focusing on crafting. The next two videos will be about gathering and solo farming. Now, usually I wouldn't hop into the intro here, but I do have a pretty big announcement. I have just released my brand new website as this video goes live. Now, of course, it'll be updated frequently with every new video and updated with some older videos with good information converted into a readable format. There are a few posts up right now and of course if you're interested in this series and anything in the future there will be posts before the videos go live as well. Now with all that being said let's get into it. <music> Now, crafting on the Realm Reborn is actually kind of crazy. There are so many forgotten crafts that actually are needed for a ton of different things. Relic weapons, FC airships, submarines, etc. But we'll go over first with niche crafting. And the first niche craft is the perfect items, which are required for a certain step in your zodiac relic weapon, along with the book turnins. I call these perfect crafts, but not everything follows the perfect naming convention. There is a tailor made eel pie, furnace ring, perfect cloth, perfect pounce, perfect firewood, and I believe I'm missing just one more. Of course, I will have a team craft list and we'll go ahead and look at that in a moment, but this sells for a ton and quite consistently, especially if you're in the middle of a patch lull in between patches, a ton of people are going to be doing their relic weapons and they're going to be buying from you. Since not a lot of people know about this, you don't really have to deal with the obscene amount of undercutting, but as you can see, it's not just the high quality crafted items, it is also the intermediates that I sold there. Now, where exactly do you get these intermediates? So you are going to come over here to the Western Finaland, to the location X15Y29, and you're going to see this little Lollafell Merchant and Mender. Now, you kind of see this NPC and you're probably thinking he doesn't really have anything, does he? Well, he does. Go to the Purchase Items tab and you're going to see these items age ring, age spear, age mortar, etc. for 3k each. Now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to buy, depending on what you want to craft for a furnace ring, perfect firewood, you need to buy the item that when you desynthesize the item will drop to the intermediate. Usually I just buy 99 stacks of each if I have a ton of gill or if I want to go ahead and just stock up on them for selling later. I would just buy a bit of each, test your luck on the desynthesis and see how much you'll get. So it gets pretty expensive, 25 each, 75k per stack. I'm going to buy all these, we're going to desynthesize them and see how much we'll get. Now the best thing about these items is that they come into stacks. Meaning you can desynthesize a whole stack at 25 with just one click of the button. Now, so far we have two enchanted vellums. Mm, not that good, honestly. Pretty unlucky here, but hopefully we'll get more of the other ones. So from that one stack, we only got three age vellums, but one age vellum is actually 52,000 per each. Even though I spent 75,000 on that whole stack, I still made a profit with three of these being 52,000. But let's go ahead, do all of them, and see what we get. Now, I just finished the synthesizing. These are all the most expensive and aged items that I got from, from all of the different pieces. Now, let's go to the market board, post them, and see whether or not I made it profit from just the desynthesis. Since I bought 8 stacks of 75,000, we spent a total of 600,000 for all the pre decent items. With the stained cloth, I made 159,000 from the 4 that we managed to get from 25 pieces. That is a profit. With a total of 6 of these spear shafts, we made a profit of 290,000 with the synthesis only, so that is also a profit. 
five of the aged pastel pieces, again, still a profit. Now, this was a loss. The items are actually quite cheap, a little bit too cheap. Personally, I would buy them and use it to craft, but also at least we made just a bit more back. And with this, three vellums, so 149, a profit. The aged eye of fire, 221,000, again, a profit. And the vintage cooking sherry, still a profit, but again, a little bit too cheap. But what if we went ahead and crafted these items? Here is the perfect mortar, which is used by those cheap aged mortar pieces. And of course, you can easily see that plenty of people are buying even per day. Something old as this. But of course, it is for a zodiac relic weapon, so it will never ever go out of need. And of course, all of these perfect items are in the team craft list below, but we will go ahead and take a look at it together. What is next on our zodiac relic weapon item crafting list? So what is next on the crafting list? Well, it's still zodiac relic items. So this does look like a, you know, typical green item that really who is going to buy that? Well, of course, people are going to need it because it ties to the quest line. Now, of course, as you can see from the image on the screen, you need to attach two pieces of materia to do it in the quest line. But as you can see, it's not necessarily necessary since people don't even bother buying it pre-melded. They usually just buy it at high quality. The price jumps up and down. It can go as low as 24k, 14k, but it can be sold at 97,000 for each. It really depends what your marker board looks like. And of course, take a look at all the weapons listed there and see what is actually best on your server. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the team craft list. Now here are all the items and its price to craft. 2.9k for the first one, the Green Champion's Lance. You can go ahead and sell it for 29,000. But of course, that's not even the best one. The Aeolian Scimitar, craftable with only 1.3k gil investment, sellable at 149,000. Now of course, let's look at the perfect items. Tailor made pie costs 19,000 to go ahead and craft. But of course, if you go ahead and desynthesize the items yourself, you will save that 19K and go ahead and sell it for 95,000 a piece, which is pretty darn good. And of course, this will be down in the description below with the brand new website that we just made. You can see all the lists there and everything in a nice and beautiful readable format. Now it doesn't end there with relic items. Let's go ahead and take a look at the FC Workshop items. And here is our first item. This is in the Masterbook Recipes number one with your armorer, and it is the Garland Steel. Now you probably haven't heard of it, especially if you have not touched airships or submersibles, but of course it is necessary for the airship hull or I don't know, something in the front, whatever. People need it, and obviously, as you can see, people are buying it all the time, and quite a bit as well. Now, if you do have a ton of Grand Company seals to spend, and I also have a video for that, farming Grand Company seals, you can save a ton by buying your own coke to use for the Garland Steel. But it's not just Garland Steel. Next is the Wolfram Ingot, craftable with your Masterbook Recipe 1 for Blacksmith. You can go ahead and of course, use your Grand Company seals for the shield light, you'll save quite a bit. But per one, you can sell it for anywhere around 6.3k gil on my server right now, but it tends to fluctuate between four point between 4k and 5k up to the highs of 7k. So it is pretty good. And of course, how often people buy it and for how much they buy it and how much they buy at a time, this is really good. And you only need your first master book to go ahead and start crafting mates. Now, something a bit more accessible to all crafters with your first master book you can go ahead and make magitech repair materials and stacks of 99 so so often for so much every single day even on my server so this is really good it is on every crafter on their master book one but i also have a list so let's go ahead and take a look at all the items that I put together that are needed for FC crafts. A reminder, you do not need an FC to craft any of these. These are just with your general crafting and your master books. And of course, here is the list. We're going to go ahead to a pricing mode and see, especially if you're wondering like, oh, what master book do I need for this? Do I need a master book for this specific item? You can go ahead and see what master book is required here by these little books 
signified to the right side. So let's go to pricing mode, click the spending tab up here, and then fill prices based on your market board prices, your server only. Now, something to keep in mind, for some reason, it doesn't take the NPC price into account. It actually takes the more expensive price on the market board. So if you see something like this, for example, the grade six dark matter, viable for 120 gil at the NPC, but 271 on servers, I'm going to stick with 120, then you can go ahead and see the true price of craft at the bottom. So do keep that in mind. Now we have all the items here. Let's see what's actually worth it. Here again are the magic tech materials. Now depending on the crafter, you can actually save a bit of money because depending on the crafter, you're using specific crystals to go ahead and craft each craft. Usually the green, pink, red and blue crystals are a little bit more expensive since alchemists and culinarian tend to use these crystals they tend to be a little bit more expensive the 1035 gill right here craftable at that price sellable at 1995 when you're selling stacks at 99 that actually tends to be quite a bit and depending how many stacks you sell per day of course that would be worth it to you now what else do we have here the treated spruce lumber Craftable at 6.4k, sellable at 18,000 at normal quality or 19,000 at high quality. The ancient lumber, craftable at 3 point, craftable at 3k, sellable at either 7.2k. But I would tend to look at the lowest price here because that's actually what people are buying. Whether it would be normal quality or high quality, it doesn't really matter for these items. 5.7k is the price you'll be selling at. But that's not even the best one. Now, not all of these are at level 50 crafts only there are some that are slightly higher that i wanted to include just so people know that there are these available at level 60 70 and i think 80 but 60 and 70 tend to be where the most is at now something like the camisite craftable at 18,000, quite expensive for one craft but you can sell it for 35,000 each and one of my favorites, the High Elegant Chimera Leather, craftable at 1.8k, but sellable at 6.3k or high quality for 8.3. But of course, we're looking at the 6.3 because that is what tends to sell since nobody really needs high quality. Again, this list will be in the blog post, so go ahead and check it out if you want to see what's good for your server. Now, let's move on to the miscellaneous niche items before we go into the rest of A Realm Reborn. Now, here's something that is quite truly niche the attire augmentation items now what is this exactly used for for a lot of the for the a rubber born relic attires meaning something similar to our mainline class job gear the one that you know looks like white mage look like red mage etc at a realm reborn you do need these augmentation coffers to go ahead and augment these pieces of gear so you can be able to dye them now they're not bought extremely often but when they are bought you yeah, making a good buck out of it so of course there is a list as well and we can go ahead and take a look for what sells most so here are the entire augmentation boxes and for a craftable at around 10k each you can sell it at 73,000, 152,000, 100,000, 244,000, and 74,000. Now, nobody has the Wizard's Attire Augmentation Coffer. We can go and see what other servers are tending to sell this at. The cheapest is at servers for 75k, Mughal 90k, Omega cheapest 199, and on Ragnarok 500k. But most times, people buy it at around 50k, but it's still pretty good depending on how much it costs for you to go ahead and craft especially just having one up and to sell it slowly won't hurt because especially not many people know about it and since it is glamour people are going to use it regardless now next up are some bardings first up the title barding craftable with the armor craft at level 50 next up it's the 11 barding and then the ice barding these usually tend to sell quite well because they of course are something you can go ahead and collect and it's a bit of glamour for your chocobo so even though these are a little bit old people will still go ahead and buy them every single day practically now the next items are orchestrian rolls and there's a lot you can do at just with a realm reborn with orchestrian rolls and of course i have a list i will go ahead and take a look at but the first one is from the ashes now it is a slow sell but if you're selling it at 250,000, especially if nobody is crafting these on your server 
people will go ahead and buy them because there are a ton of completionists out there and you can go ahead and serve them by, you know, putting it for quite of an expensive price. But even if you're selling it at 90k as per the usual price there, you'll still make a good enough profit. And here is another one, Battle on the Big Bridge or Kestian Rule. Usually sellable at around 90k right now, but it was as cheap as 10k. So of course, that is why the list is so important. You want to know how much it's worth on your server, because all our servers are a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take a look. And here are all of the Orchestrian rolls. Now at the top, these are something you can flip if you go ahead and buy at the vendor. Buyable with only 5k gil, you can go ahead and sell it for 52,000. So if you're interested in flipping, you can go ahead and do that. But for the rest, with all the crafting, you're looking at an average price craft from 1k to up to 5.9k. Not a lot at all. And especially some of these are quite expensive. A light in the storm 1.2k to craft, but you can go ahead and sell it for 31,000. Again, the battle on the big bridge, 1.2k, what we just saw, and sellable at 94,000 per month. The Maker's Ruin, craftable at 2.4k, and go ahead and sell it for 92k each. So go ahead, take a look at this list, and if you're wanting to go ahead to craft something that doesn't require a big investment, this is certainly something you can do and you don't have to deal with a lot of undercutting, because most people forget about these items. Now, next up with a Realm Reborn crafting is, of course, Glamour. Now, there is a lot of low-level Glamour pieces that a ton of people want and buy every day, and the first one being the Light Steel items. The Light Steel Glarus is bought pretty often and for a decent price as well. You only need to be, of course, level 50, but it does use your Master Book. And the bottom piece also sells quite well and for just as much. But what if you don't have a master book, but you still want to go ahead and craft some glamour? Here is the altered felt robe, craftable at level 48, no master book needed, and you can sell it for 42,000, which is quite good for such a low level craft and at no barrier of entry at all. So you can go ahead right with your level 43 with your weaver, you can go ahead and craft this. But of course, we have a list. Let's go ahead and take a look. And here is the full list of all the Aroma Born Glamour pieces, excluding the weapons. Now, you really do have to be careful about what you're crafting. The Crescent pieces, you can sell this, the Crescent Moon Cone, for 602000 but you've got to make sure that you've got enough money for the investment, the investment being 338000 So keep that in mind as well. And look at this Crescent Moon Nightcap. It costs 320 8,000 to go ahead and craft, but it's only sellable at 82,000. Always take a look at the price of craft and make sure you've got enough for the investment and that you're crafting at a profit. I also do recommend heavily to go ahead and data center travel hop. Now, of course, you can go ahead and see right here in team craft how much items are but it's only going to show you on your data center. It does not show light for me. I don't know if that's something that they can add, but for now, you only see chaos since I'm on chaos. Of course, if you're on light, you'll only see light, etc. So I would advise, especially if you're buying something expensive like the dress material or the waterproof cotton cloth, go ahead, take a look at the full data center price list, which you can usually find, of course, with Universe Talus. And of course, next in Glamour are Glamour Weapons. I love crafting Glamour Weapons. I made a ton as a Sprout and even when I was a multi-melded Omni Crafter. They are timeless and people will always be buying them, especially the ones that look good. Now, the most important part is to look for what actually sells and for what actually sells well. Because for me, if something is selling at around 20k, it's not necessarily worth my time to go ahead, post it, and keep track of it with undercut. But if it's something like this, 98k per each, and is bought almost every other day or every day. Now, this is just one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list. And here are all the Aroma Born Glamour weapons. Now, it's a lot. Don't feel too overwhelmed. Just focus on the most expensive ones that you see here and make sure that the price of craft is not too expensive for you. Something like the Vial of the Vortex, craftable with 10k gil, but you can sell it for 152,000. 
thousand. But that is just my server. That is why we use the price to craft and the build prices based on your mark board only to see what is worth it for you. But that's all we have with Glamour. Let's move on to the next section, which is low level crafting. Now, low level crafting in the Realm Reborn can be a little bit difficult since a lot of these items are, of course, very low level since Aroma Born is the very first expansion you start with. But something that will always work out, and a lot of my viewers know it, but this is for a few of the newer ones, especially the Sprouts. You can make a ton of gil with just the last quest items for all the crafters. Now it is 1 to 60, but a majority of these items you can craft 1 to 50. And we'll go ahead to the pricing list and see how much you can spend versus how much you'll make with this list. Now. I don't really know why this list says you can make a billion gil with it. Let's just ignore that and look crafts specifically. Now, usually since with gatherer class quest items, you no longer need it to be at high quality. So a lot of these are pretty bad and honestly not worth it. So let's scroll down and go to the crafter class quest items. And now I can pretty much see if this is where the money is at. Now you're always going to have to craft high quality. All the class quests, almost all of them require a high quality and most likely that is what's going to be bought since that's what you need. Now the U longbow price to craft 1.4k but you can go ahead and sell it for 41,000. Not bad considering since it is such a low level craft. You know let's go ahead on Louisois and see is it really that much and how often is it bought. And here is the U longbow of course craftable at level 46. No master book required. You can sell it for 41k and it is bought almost every day, sometimes twice a day. So this is really good if you are a low level crafter and since every class requires a class quest item or items since there are a ton of them, you can do this on any class. So if you only have weaver, you can craft the weaver class quest items. If you only have carpenter, you can go ahead and craft the carpenter class quest items. You don't have to deal with using other crafters to go ahead and craft what you need. So while this list won't make you a billion gil, you'll still be able to make quite a bit even if you're just a sprout. Now let's go on to the next list, low level crafts with no mass bug and no crafter class quests. As you can see, something like varnish is bought every single day and a ton at a time. And you're wondering why is it so expensive and why are people buying this all the time? A level 41 craft, well it is for a ton of housing items, which will be our final section. So of course you can go ahead and craft this, sell a bunch with only having to be a level 41 alchemist. But are there more items like this? Well of course there are. Next is the dark steel nugget craftable with your blacksmith and armor crafter at level 50. And while it does have a star, it is not from a master book. It is just from the level 46 to 50 items and towards the bottom. But the nugget plate rings and rivets also sell quite well, but the nugget sells the best. And of course I have a list so let's quickly take a look at that. And here is the list. The cobalt ingot sells quite well. The cobalt rivets as well but not as good as the cobalt ingot itself. The blank grey 2 orchestral rolls craftable at 1.3k but sellable at 7.3k. And of course the varnish 1.6k but you can sell so many at a time for just 2.2k. Now this is not a gigantic list but a lot of these items are pretty timeless gonna be used in so many crafts and you can make consistent go with these items. Now let's go into our final section, which is furniture. And I'll start off with a few of my favorite ones before we do go on the Aroma Born furniture list. First one being the Manor Fireplace. A ton of people use this and so many are bought per day, even on Louis Swap when there is barely any open housing available at all. If your server is like mine, focus more on interior furnishing than exterior furnishing because most people are going ahead and decorating their apartment apartments, FC rooms, etc. They're usually not having a home with an outside, so do keep that in mind. But it doesn't mean you can't sell outside furniture. It's just recommended that you do the interior instead. But if you're on the brand new servers, which are on the EU and JP server clumps right now, you can do exterior furniture and quite well, in fact, since there is affordable housing on those servers, but not in ours, at least not for now. So of course, take a look and see what works on your server with the list, but I'll show you a few more items. Next is the mounted bookshelf, craftable at level 45, and as you can see, bought extremely often 
every single day. And next, the Oriental Bathtub Craftable at level 50. Again, there is no master book needed. This is just under the housing section and it is, of course, bought several times every single day. And finally, for the one that was my favorite as a sprout, the Wall Planter. You do not need a ton to go ahead and get this craft going and as you can see, so many of them are bought per day. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the list. And of course, here is all the Aroma Born Inside Furniture Crafting Levels 1 through 50. There are so many here, so many crafts to do, but if you craft everything, one of each out of this entire list, you will be spending 1.4 million guild but you will make 5.9 million guild although that looks like a great number i really emphasize on focusing particular pieces instead of this whole list especially look for things that sell often sell for quite a bit and of course check what's best on your market board it might be different than mine market board that's why lists are so important now this is for inside furniture i also have an outside furniture list it is separate since maybe you only want to focus on the interior or maybe you only want to focus on the exterior and then the interior you can have two separate lists which of course will be linked with the blog post so that was how you can make it with only a realm reborn with just crafting now of course there is going to be two more parts to this video with only gathering and with only farming meaning your job classes no crafting or gathering required now guys thank you so much for watching this video and of course i would hope that you could go ahead take a look at the website let me know what you want to see there what you're hoping for any subject that you want covered there or if you have old video of mine that you want redone and made into a blog post please let me know i will be always updating this website and we're gonna have all sorts of goodies for our members twitch subs and discord boosters which of course you get access to all the lists earlier with all that being said again thank you so much for watching hope to see you on the website and also hope to see you in the next video goodbye